Hello everyone. Have you gotten into a network that will help you in your business? A master one, mastermind. Of, one of the things that we talk about constantly is the best investment that you can make is an investment in yourself. Amen. And we're going to discuss with five of our close friends, uh, some of the stuff that we learned out of our last mastermind class. So we'll be right back with that. Thank you so much for joining us on the passive, I'm sorry, active income, passive wealth show. I can never get that right. It doesn't matter. We are Carolina Capital Management. I'm Bill Fairman. This is Wendy Sweet. We are a lender. If you're interested in borrowing money in the Southeast, uh, click on the uh, apply now tab on carolinahardmoney.com. If you're a passive investor, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Uh, we, we have a comment section on the right side of the screen or just underneath the screen, depending on what platform you're viewing us from. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, don't hesitate as long as they're good comments Yeah, <laughs> to put them in there. <laughs> so right. gentlemen, it's been awesome to uh, see you back on the screen again. And I'm going to, I'm going to go through the names real quick. Of course, you can see them on the screen, but uh, we have Kukwan Bao of NNG Capital. Glenn Stromberg is trying to uh, log in. He'll be with us here shortly. Stromberg Investment Group, uh, Jacob Vanderslice with Van West Partners, Mike Zlotnick, Timbo, Tempo Funding, but you can just say bigmikefund.com. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Chris Miles with Money Ripples, the anti financial. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys for joining us. Um, so all of us are involved in several masterminds and we had a really good November and what I wanted to do. And again, we're in January, but it was a November meeting, <laughs> but we got so much out of it. I, I just wanted to kind of share uh, what we all got out of uh, the meeting. And, and again, we're all in different places and we get different things. So uh, I'm just going to kind of go around the horn and get your opinion on uh, just a couple of uh, top takeaways, top takeaways mm -hmm. you got uh, from the meeting. So uh, Mike's got a call and we tend to ramble on. Uh, so he's got a call a little bit later. So I'm going to start with him first so he can dive out of here if he needs to. So uh, Mr. Slotnick, uh, give me a kind of high points on, on what you got out of uh, Collective Genius and uh, Freedom Founders this uh, past November. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Wendy, uh, for having me and, and great to see you all. We see each other too often, so it's a great company. <laughs> So I'm going to shoot through a couple of bullet points. Uh, so uh, Collective Genius is a great mastermind. Freedom Found is a great mastermind. So I'm just going to go through some really, really important, just very few points, not too many. So number one, role of a CEO. So I thought about this. We had a great presentation on CEO and C COO and the difference. Mm -hmm. So I took some notes and really um, these are the key points that a CEO should do. Everything else should be delegated to COO. Whatever you do, whatever organization you're running, these are the most important things. So vision and ideas. So defining the vision and identifying the key ideas. Um, two, cash and financials. Make Making sure that uh, there is money to run the business. You have to bring in the bacon. Uh, typically, CEOs are involved with sales, making sure that the sales process is strong and the revenues are there. And uh, third uh, is hire and develop talent and relationships. So leadership, providing essential leadership. So that's one of the key lessons learned from the CG mastermind. And then from the Freedom Founders mastermind, I picked up on many things, but one thing really sticks out. Real, very simple idea. The idea is that uh, star athletes uh, have uh, great coaches. And... Um, uh, one of the uh, presenters was a coach to the star athletes. And what's most fascinating, he helps folks um, to perform better by uh, t taking on a role of a Superman or Wonder Woman or um, whatever you like to do. Whoever is your character that you need to be 
to become uh, during your peak performance, uh, you, you suddenly turn off your average Joe and you become the Superman. And now you can do 10 times more. You can fly. You can do anything you want. And these are kind of the lessons in business too. If you want to achieve something, you got to believe you're greater than your average day-to-day uh, -day, uh, uh, boring life in a manner of speaking. You got to sort of set great goals and reach for the stars. So that's it. Excellent. Yeah, there's an old saying that you, uh, with, with your arrow, you're supposed to aim for the sky. So in worst case, you hit the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Who was that speaker that said that I, his name has slipped me? Who was the speaker that was doing that? And you know what? What's most fascinating is I, I remember the the speech, uh, but I'm blanking out on the speaker name. If you give me a second, oh Todd Herman, I believe. Todd okay. Herman is, is his name. He is an right. entrepreneur and business coach and a mentor. That's the gentleman right. who. Um, That's right. Excellent. Yeah, well, awesome. thank you, Mike. Um, Glenn, I'm glad to see you made it. So give me a big smile. <laughs> glad I did. Glad to be here. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so. Uh, Jacob, you're next, buddy. So before I pull you up here, though, uh, we did have a question on our last uh, show about self-storage. What is the best way or how is the best way to get involved in the self-storage business? That was the question. How's that for loaded? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a tricky question to answer. Um, well, self storage is very operationally intensive. It's a it's a great business, but uh, it's not a it's not a fire and forget business by any means. Um, I would say first and foremost, you want to get yourself educated. Uh, there's a few great educators out there in the space, and and the first guy that comes to mind is Scott Myers. Mm. Um, he does his own deals, and he also provides uh, an education platform that. Uh, uh, helps people kind of understand the ins and outs of investing in self storage, how to value deals, how to operate deals, how to identify markets that are appropriate for investing in self storage. Um, so yeah, I'd say first and foremost, get yourself educated. Um, and then secondly, uh, the best way to learn after you've learned the basics is to do a deal. Um, you don't want to think about it too much or overanalyze it. You're not going to learn unless you're actually out there uh, acquiring and operating properties. So learn the nuts and bolts, uh, maybe through Scott Myers or somebody that's similar and, and buy your first deal. And, and I would just add to that. If you're an accredited investor, there's no point in um, actually buying the property. Just invest alongside the professionals that are already doing it. That's right. Yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of great fund managers out there that do self storage. Uh, we have a couple self storage funds. Uh, there's a group called Elevation Capital that uh, has a hybrid self storage and mobile home park fund. Um, other group is out there called Reliant. Uh, there's there's all kinds of good sponsors and fund managers that are in the strategy. And uh, if you don't want to do all the heavy lifting and all the work yourself, that might be a good vehicle for you to, to get involved in the asset class without uh, having to quit your day job. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Invest right. with Jake. Yes. Invest right. with Jake and Event West. I'm That's a fund right. manager. I'm an allocator. And we took a portion of our allocation and we just invested in the Van West fund too. Why go to the strangers? Invest, invest with the best. How about that? <laughs> I like it, Mike. Thanks. Like it. Well, awesome. Yeah. All right. So here's, same question I had for Mike. What, what's uh, kind of a high, high point or highlight that you got out of the uh, mastermind? Yeah, I, uh, uh, for Collective Genius, I regrettably wasn't able to spend much time in that conference, but uh, I was, of course, at Freedom Founders. And a couple uh, valuable things I took away from there. One of the themes of that uh, discussion that week was hedging. And, and hedging is kind of a sort, sort of an innocuous term. And um, I think the spirit of the discussion as it relates to hedging and Freedom Founders was finding different strategies that both have upsides and downsides in different market environments and spreading your asset allocation and your investment strategy across deals that have a growth component and across deals that also have an income component and sometimes deals that have both. Um, and I think, uh, I think we're maybe on the precipice of possibly an inflationary environment right now. And uh, regardless of the asset class that you're focused on, I think, I think real estate that creates cash flow with uh, responsible leverage and inexpensive long-term debt is a great place to be right now. So hedging was a big, a big theme that uh, I, I got a lot of takeaways from. And another one was drag. And by drag, we're talking about drag in our, in our businesses. So what's kind of dragging our businesses down? And in our business, uh, we're often guilty of 
um, focusing on the urgent things and not the important things because over and over something urgent happens and you never create them enough time to, to focus on the important things. So crafting your business operations in a manner where the urgent things have a system that get taken care of automatically and a process in place um, is great. And that way that as those urgent things come in, they can be processed and dealt with. And as the business owner, you can, you can focus more like a CEO does, as Mike mentioned earlier, on the big picture, the strategy, the relationships, the, and the vision. So drag importance versus urgence, uh, urgent things and, uh, and, and hedging or my big takeaways from Freedom Founders. Yeah, that, that's a good point. If you're you're constantly putting out fires, yeah. you're in the weeds, you don't have time for the, you know, the big picture stuff. And yep. that's the Im importance of having a, a good team and having the right people in place uh, to handle that for you. That's exactly right. Awesome. Fuquan. Yeah, I mean, I, I just echo what Jacob and Mike talked about. Um, you know, for me, the 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 term that they always use, they used it last year and this year also, also is easier to do than to think, mm -hmm. right? So that really always hit home with me. And that was like, you know, a really big wake up call for me at the CG event um, when that was mentioned again from the stage, because as you were just saying, you know, staying in the weeds and trying to do instead of really thinking and having that uh, COO in place that can execute your vision is very important. So. Uh, from the CG event to me, that was like the biggest takeaway. You know, a lot of us uh, business owners always, I can do it myself. You know, no one can do it like I can do it and don't have the faith to kind of, you know, pass that responsibility along. So it's not easy. You have to do it in stages um, and we'll be willing to relinquish those responsibilities and have confidence in the person that you're training to step into that position to kind of run a team. So you can be more the visionary. And that's something Glenn told me a few years ago, you know, so, you know, with the, one list and the things you like, the things you don't like, and then delegate and elevate. So thank you for that again, Glenn. At the Freedom Founder event, um, for me, it was the same thing, hedging, as Jacob mentioned. And um, I like the the, the, the the debate that we had, the, the equity versus debt debate. Uh, I learned a lot from that as well. Uh, everyone loves equity because they, they believe that the upside is greater. Uh, so we got the opportunity to see both sides, uh, even though the the uh, the debt and the equity part won. Uh, still was grateful to go through that uh, debate and learn a few things and kind of figure out where everybody mindset is at um, for for you know the coming year. Where their mindset is at as far as from an investing standpoint, what type of deals they're looking for. So it's always great when we had those debates. So it's, for me, that was, those were the highlights from both masterminds. Well, that's funny you mentioned that the equity versus debt. While uh, we all argued different sides of that equation, all of us like both. <laughs> and, and I know all of you agree with that, that we all like both. It depends. Uh, but we're we're arguing one side or the other. Except for Glenn. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I mean, you know. He likes mobile estate. That's <laughs> a little different. It's he, he, See, he, the, the, they're, they're all good. It just depends on where you are in life. If you're a little older uh, and you're not worried about passing along, a, you know, uh, to your heir or something, then equity, you don't have time to wait around for equity. So you're looking for the, for the income part of it. So uh, again, in, in most people's lives, both are beneficial. Um, it, all you have to do is kind of judge uh, what percentage of your, portfolio is in one or the other, right. you know, uh, based on uh, your, whether, how risk averse you are. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Um, Good stuff. Chris, and I'm sorry, Glenn, I'm leaving you to last because you got here last. <laughs> I, I deserve it's, it. I deserve it. Penalty for tardiness. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was a technical issue. <laughs> Living the best for last. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so Chris, yeah, what, what did you get out of it? You know, uh, I've been part of masterminds over the last 20 years, whether it's casual or more formal, like what we're talking about here. Uh, I'll tell you, like the biggest things I get is a, a few things, right? One, it's always nice to be able to associate with those people that have their finger on the pulse, right? Mm -hmm. Not just what's going on in the present, right? Right now, forecast and kind of say, hey, 
here's what's coming down the road here. We need to be aware of this. We need to kind of have this warning, right? We need to start making a correction now. And, and I know in both mastermind programs, that's been the case where, you know, in many cases, we've been able to be ahead of the curve based on what things might, might occur, right? So I think that's a big one. Number one is just, you know, be able to have that knowledge and that expertise around you, those, those people around you. Um, you know, two, it's always great to see people that are at a, at a certain success level too. You know, we tend to elevate with each other, right? Um, it's, it's hard because I used to be the guy that thought I was the guru for my own clients, right? And I had to be the one that was teaching them all. But the things I learned from the mastermind groups that I've been a part of, I realized I need to be more of a facilitator because sometimes the best value that my clients get is when other clients teach each other. Mm -hmm. So when we're able to talk to each other, right, we're able to exchange with one another and, and share ideas. And, you know, I used to hire a lot of coaches and now I've realized that for me, masterminds is actually almost a coaching program in and of itself, because it's not just one coach that you're trying to rely everything upon. You're getting lots of opinions. You're getting lots of perspectives to help give you a kind of a more comprehensive picture in, in a lot of ways, right? And you can go to certain people that specialize in certain areas when you have certain questions. And and that for me has been really the biggest thing is that, you know, well, uh, one of the biggest things is of course, you know, be able to share and, and be able to learn from one another, be able to see the forecast in the future or even what's going on right now. But I'll tell you the number one thing for me, that third thing would be the fact that I walk away wanting to be a better person, a better husband, a better father, just a better person in general when I'm around the right people, right? right? When you're in that right mastermind group, you want to be a better person. You become a better person as a result. And I feel the elevation every time. And as a result, even in my finances, they elevate too. My business elevates because as I elevate myself as a person and develop myself, then everything else around me develops too. So I think that's the biggest thing for me is that I did not expect was how I become a better person. That's so good. I, that information is awesome. And I, I love the way that you um, highlighted the being the better you, because that mm -hmm. really is what's so important when you're, you're choosing a mastermind to um, invest your, in with yourself, um, having like-minded people that have this, you know, similar moral code and um, the, the ethics mm -hmm. that you're using and, um, it really is. It's not just about your business. It's about your buy, your mind, your body, your soul, uh, and your business just happens to get a piece of it. So, so, right. you know, it's all wrapped up together. You know, the other thing that you said too, that you said first was about looking into the future. And I've said this before and, and I've said it to a bunch of people and I'll say it again. I, I'm still, uh, my mind is still blown about last year, our trusted advisor meeting at Freedom Founders, how, you know, we, uh, the, the th it was in January. And the thing that we were concentrating on was if a newspaper was laid on your door in the morning and it showed that your business was going to lose 50% right then, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle it? Who are you going to communicate to? Who are you going to let go? What are you going to do to make those changes? And we, we treated that as a real event and we worked on that plan. And, you know, what happens literally 30 days later, COVID hits mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were prepared. You know, we had, we had everything in place um, to make a move. We didn't miss a beat. It was, and it was because of the mastermind event that we went through that, that uh, exercise was just unbelievable. And, yeah. Absolutely. And, and you know, the bettering of your personal self, mm. uh, I find key as well. The reason that I got so involved in my personal fitness was uh, my competitive nature with Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to compete against Fuqua. No. He knows better. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not in that same arena, but when, you know, Glenn and I would be at uh, different events, we went to Jonathan Sprinkle's event and he's walking around with a Ziploc bag of food that he was eating <laughs> because he could only eat so many things. And he really stuck to that diet. And I went, well, he can stick to that diet. I can stick to mine. <laughs> and then he, he would do CrossFit in a warehouse in August in Fort Worth, <laughs> which is just insane. And I'm going, no air conditioning. No, that's okay. I'm like, all right, well, 
I can do, I can work out in an air conditioned gym then. <laughs> well, then you got to be careful, Chris, too. Miles is his last name because that's what he does. He runs miles. Yeah. Yes, he does. He does. All right. I'm not a runner. <laughs> Don't claim to be. And every time I try, I get plantar fasciitis. <laughs> yeah. Chris actually pushed me to my max at the last mastermind. Oh, that's what I remember. Um, about yeah, that. he pushed me to my max. I forgot how much we ran. What was it? A 12K or something? I don't know. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. It's funny, Chris influenced me as well because in my last uh, CrossFit class, one of the girls there were giving me a bunch of grief about how stiff my hips were because we were stretching. And she said, You really need some help. I said, Well, I can do like a salsa dance. And I started doing the knee thing like you were showing us <laughs> without snapping a knee. And it made it look like I had good movement in my hips, but it was just my knees. <laughs> So that was awesome. All right, Glenn, uh, enough of this banter. <laughs> what uh, what did you get out of the last uh, couple of masterminds we were at? Well, you, well, you know, when you go last, everyone stole my thunder pretty much. But uh, but uh, <laughs> no, I, I'll take a different direction. And, and I want to say this. I think I think everyone who's watching this can tell. Everybody on the screen, we're great friends. You know, we're great friends. We Not only from a business point of view do we help each other personally, and uh, I consider everyone on the screen great friends. And that, that's really, that's really a, the real bonus that I've learned about mastermind groups through the years, just fantastic friendships and people you count on and, and so forth. So uh, a lot of good comments by, by my friends here. Uh, but, I, yeah, so what, I, what I'll say is this. Um, you know, I was absolutely, you know, John Burns, who is like the foremost real estate guru for projections, everything else. Um, you know, of course, he went through trends, right? And and some of it was what I knew, you know, affordable housing is always a great place to be. There's going to be a tremendous need for turnkey for the, the new buzz is, is, is built to rent now. They're, those are getting very popular. And, um, of course, the migration, right? People are moving from, you know, a lot of blue states into red states, right? Because of the regulations, because of COVID and everything else. But uh, you know, I got I got to say this: the number one thing that that just kind of blew me away, and I don't know what the answer is, is about everybody I talked to. I asked this question. I think I said, you know, what do you think of 2021? Do you do you see it as a boom year? Do you see it as a down year? Whatever. And it was almost split down the middle. I mean, half the people see it as just there is a housing short, shortage in America, so all that looks good. Other people think that because of regulations, because of COVID, things are shutting down again. You, you better bet, you know, button down the hatch or whatever, and 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 be ready for a, for a tough year. And uh, you know, I'm just prepared for both. I'm just prepared for both. I, I I lean towards an affordable housing that there's always need for affordable housing, so I'm not going to worry about that. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was because it was 50 50 half the people think 2021 is going to kill it half the people think it's going to be could be a potentially another 2008 and uh once again only god knows right well there's a big separation between wall street and uh, main street right now uh, there's a, small businesses are getting crushed in a lot of different states uh and at the same time your multinational companies are blowing it out of the water and uh, sure unfortunately, uh, what I see happening, if we have continuing regu regulations or a continuance of past regulations, mm -hmm. is that it's going to stifle innovation. It's going to uh, stifle the small businesses that come up with the innovation. And so you're still going to have the big companies are going to outperform because they have the uh, money and the resources to yeah. overcome the regulations and the high taxes and, and whatnot. And it's small business entrepreneurs that are really going to suffer. Mm. <clears throat> that said, there's going to be people that work for these companies that make plenty of money and they can work anywhere they want. So I still love the uh, real estate sectors. There's always going to be people that uh, are going to want to store their stuff somewhere. So the uh, self storage is still going to be a, a, a good sector. Uh, Mike is in a good position with uh, the, uh, and he's leaving us, so okay. he's got a call. So see you later. <laughs> see you later, uh, everybody. I apologize. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. So he's going to be in a good position with the uh, conversions from, uh, you know, hotel uh, and was hospitality to uh, affordable housing. You had something to add there, Glenn? 
I do. You know, and, and it really doesn't matter if it's a, a good market or a bad market. There's always tremendous opportunity, sure. you know, in either one, right? Down down markets, a lot of times, there's way more opportunity than, than up markets. But in either one, you know, people who are doing business right, who 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 have the systems, processes dialed in, they're going to crush it either way. Well, that's, that's true. When I first got into business with Wendy, I thought, who in the, in their right mind would be investing in fix and flip properties in a market where the values continue to go down. And then it finally <laughs> dawned on me that it doesn't really matter what the market is doing. As long as you can buy it and sell it for more than you paid for it. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> so if, if you buy it right, it doesn't matter if the values are going down, there are going to be people that are, are, are still going to buy these things or you're going to uh, rent them out and still make an income. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So uh, we're getting here at the top of the hour. Does anyone have any further comments they'd like to make after listening to everyone else's answers? This isn't the same group of guys that I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was all, all right. said so well, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's the truth. And I mean, one, one thing that I think we can all agree that, um, it's, it's hard to invest in yourself, especially if you're, um, you know, kind of new, a newer entrepreneur and, and you're in it every day, you're in the weeds, you're thinking, how in the world can I take money from my company and invest it in, in being in a mastermind or a group that's going to encourage me and lift me up and, and make me better. How, you know, where, how do I, how do I measure that and, and, and make that move? But, I think we can all agree that that's really the best move you can make. And really, I don't know how you can stay in business without doing something like that. So I, I was just going to add, there's two ways um, to improve yourself and your business. <clears throat> Number one is wherever you're weak, hire a coach to make you better mm. or hire someone else to do that job. <laughs> one, one of those two, and you concentrate on your strengths. And if you just keep that in mind, you know, depending on where you are in business, if, if you're a one man shop and you don't have any choice, then you're going to have to hire coaches to make it better. And as you grow, get the hell out of your way. You're typically going to be the bottleneck mm -hmm. and uh, don't worry about uh, having to micromanage stuff. Find people that are skilled, uh, in areas where you're weak and pass those responsibilities on to them. Mm -hmm. Again, you're not just going to turn it over to everyone. You do have to kiss a few frogs before you find the find, true find, it, find a good one, but yeah. that's got to be your mindset mm -hmm. that uh, you don't need to be in the weeds. You need to be above it all and looking towards the future. Cause you definitely have uh, a rudderless ship at that point. That's you're, right. you're just looking at uh, getting by the, you know, the next day. All right. Listen, guys, thank you so much. It's been a little while since we've had you on all on and uh, we appreciate you joining the show. This is the active income passive wealth show. We are Carolina capital management. Uh, if you, we are a lender and if you're interested in borrowing money in the Southeast Carolina capital, I'm sorry, carolinahardmoney.com. Click on the apply now tab. If you're looking for passive returns, uh, click on the, uh, accredited investor tab. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. And uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. You're all awesome. Um, thank you. Uh, I know we'll have you back soon. Uh, as the audience Thanks goes, these guys are great to invest with, invest alongside of. Uh, I know we were putting the, their, their websites up and we'll make sure that we have all their contact info on the uh, recording on, on the recorded. Yeah, there's okay? Chris, there's Jacob, there's hurry, Glenn. hurry, write it, write it down. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have all, all that available. And, uh, if you want to hear any information about any of them, call us because we'd love to tell you what we know, even the bad stuff. <laughs> 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 you guys, have a great day. Uh, well, you made it. Again, folks, right. thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. It was great. See you guys later. Bye-bye.